our study of the Bible. We're picking up on the third lesson about the Bible. The Bible and how we got it in the perverted Bibles and scholars. And we've already did a study before the Greek in the anti-Semitism, which is part of the study. But this is on the Bible. Last time we did the reliability of the Bible. Today we're going to look at Revelation. I don't mean the book. We're talking about Revelation itself. And this one's going to take a couple weeks to go through. And we'll go through it slow. And adhere to what the Word of God has. Now Revelation, don't be mixed up with Revelation and Inspiration. Or Inerrancy. Revelation is speaking about God, communicating, speaking to man. Inspiration to note tells us what was written only. God communicates in his ways that are not in print. So there's a difference between revelation and inspiration and inerrancy. Inerrancy is without error. 100% right. So Psalms 19.1. I've already got these pre-printed. Pause, stop, rewind. Psalms 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. And of course, with this study, these are all out of the King James Bible. So he speaks through what? Who does God speak through? He speaks through his creation. God the creator. So you're stepping out the realms of evolution. Evolution does not speak through the creation. And when it does speak, there's gaps, what they call gaps. His creation, God's creation, reveals to some degree about him. What, what does the creation of God, the universe, the heavens, and under the waters? I'll tell you one thing it tells us about God. Our God loves color. And even when we get to New Jerusalem, the Bible says we're not going to have need of the sun and the moon for light. God and the, and the sun will be the light of the city thereof. And you read about those 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 gemstones. Are the walls and the foundation of New Jerusalem. You read that there's an emerald rainbow around God's throne. And when you see the pictures, and I like to see the pictures from Hubble. And when you see pictures from under the water. And you see pictures on the earth. One revelation I get of God, he loves color. And I can't imagine what the color in heaven will be without sin, without curse. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. So with the revelation of the Word of God we're looking at, and evolutionists is not going to be able to get to where we're at when in his whatever book he, this textbook 1-1, one, one, in the beginning of the Big Bang. And when we get to Genesis 1-1, one, one, I've done this, the study in my commentary about in the, the Genesis, religion the popes, their religions out there even profess to have the Bible, deny the Genesis 1-1 account. Colleges and schools deny the Genesis 1. You're not going to get beyond. You're not going to get beyond the revelation of the Scriptures and of God when you cannot acknowledge Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created. The heaven and earth. It doesn't tell you everything. Okay.
There are things in the Bible we're not told. From the infant Jesus to about two or three years old when the wise men do come, we don't know nothing. And from the time that the wise men leave until 12 years old, we know about one episode of the life of Jesus. And then from 12 years old to 30 years old, what? And there's a lot of speculation or tradition, but that's that's not the revelation of God. It's a lie. Romans 1, verse 18 to 20. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. For God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are, that are made. Even the external power to Godhead. So that they are without excuse. All men have no excuse. If they don't live up to the light given in the creation. You look at the wonderful creation by the creator and said, Big Bang. You denied the power of the creator. Whoever finished this creation. All right. What revelation do we get now? Whoever finished this creation, this creation, whoever made the nine planets in our solar system and the sun and all the moons, there was a time that it was, began the creation, and there is a time that the creation of our solar system itself was finished. And what we learn from this is that. Who, who, whoever finished the creation had to exist earlier it was made. So we learn from the revelation that God's eternal. Where did God come from? That's not the question. God's always been. Oh, I can't believe that, you know, a God you know, always was. I, no, I find it hard to believe in a Big Bang. Where did the Big Bang come from? And what does the Big Bang tell you? Oh, animals came walking out of the out of the oceans, and here they are. Oh, how many animals have walked out of the ocean since man has been on this planet? To w listen, we got we got cameras. On our phones, we get videos on our phones. Where are the YouTube videos of these animals walking, growing legs? Why is it when a whale beach itself, they bring it back out? No, it don't beach, don't drag it out to the ocean. It's trying to grow legs and walk. Sounds foolish. That's what they believe. Well, your God. Yeah, you have not believed my God like I have put my faith in my God. April 25th, 1987. And I know God because God knows me. I've got the witness that unsaved men don't have in the revelation of God. So the one thing we, we look at the creation... It tells us that there is a creator, and it tells us that the creator had to be here before the creation. Now, you realize now secular humanism and evolution, the whole quarrel they have of philosophy is very important. 
skeptics settle that whoever made the light had to exist prior to being made. We come to this foundational fact, whether you're evolution, creationist, or whatever else you believe. God had to be before the creation. The Big Bang had to be before and whatever else you believe in. But they don't want to live underneath God's authority. They have to get rid of God. Because if we acknowledge the Creator, God, then we're going to be held accountable to God. When Jesus quotes to us in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, man shall give an account of every idle word, but if we erase Jesus, if we erase God, there's no accountability that, well, evolution, we were born, and then we die, and that's it. So, boom, we become human fertilizer, and that's the end of our life, and all the violent crimes and all the injustice and all the contamination in the justice system, we become fertilizer without God. And with God the Creator, and God speaks about judgment, how do you know the revelation of judgment? Where did man get judgment from? Why do we have judges? Why do we have a Supreme Court? Why do we have just district court? Why do we have county court? Where do we get the fact is that an individual can look at something or someone and judge? Where do people get the fact is judge not least you be judged when it comes out of the Bible? Now evolution teaches that when you die, that's it, you're done. And I have talked, there's one man right now, I've got in my mind, I've talked to him. Well, when I die, that's it. There's no God. There, there, there. All right, that's the teaching of, of, of evolution and in other, most other religions. So explain to me why the place where this guy does his business, explain to me why if I were to go east, turn south one block, and there's a courthouse right across the street from the firehouse. Where did that courthouse come from? Where in the evolutionary track do we have court and judges? If in the end of evolution, we just go to be manure. Instead of going east, turning south, going one block to a courthouse, we should go to a manure factory. Right? Now, God is a judge. I think it's Abraham said, the judge of the whole earth. God of the whole earth. Where did that come from? If it's not God in the Bible. Why is it people come up to me all the time? The judge not least should be judged. Yeah, that's a Bible scripture. Why are you quoting Bible scripture if you don't believe God? <clears throat> so... If we got to get rid of God, in the beginning, God, case closed. Now, that's not case closed in a poll. And when you do digging into the Catholic Church, you will find that there is a disbelief. <coughs> Excuse me. In the beginning, God. And if you don't believe in the beginning God, then you got a problem. I believe you can't get saved unless you believe in the beginning God. I believe the Creator, Almighty God, is a fundamental fact that a person needs to believe before their salvation. Okay? Whoever completed this, and when I mean this, everything invisible and invisible. Invisible and visible. Whether you can see it or you can't see it. Whoever completed and completed all this. 
not only did he have to be pre-existent before the creation, but he also has to have control over what he created. Now, this is where the lie of theistic evolution, God made it and then let it go. You mean a virus that's running wild worldwide? Hurricanes innumerable. Typhoons. Fires. That's a God that says, okay, I created it all, go at it. That's not a very good God. If there's not reasoning. And the reasoning of hurricanes and fires and, and virus is a judgment of God before the judgment falls. But when was the last time you finished a galaxy? When? The entire creation has the suggestion of a massive control of whatever it was that fashioned it. Jesus tells us that God feeds the, the sparrows and visits the death of a dead animal. And for a prophet, God told the ravens to, to get some food and feed my prophet. Someone was, was not only before the ravens, and somebody who made the ravens also has control over the raven. And it's sure not man. They call it the Big Bang. Since they got to have an incredible outburst of energy to cause it. Well, okay, we got to have something great and powerful like God. The Almighty God is great and powerful. So this great, big, big bang. Wow. Okay, so what does the big bang, your God, What control does the Big Bang have over us today? What can we explain about death according to the Big Bang? How is it that most women, most women, I know this early and late, but most women, how is it by Mr. or Mrs. Big Bang that the common woman, every mother that gives birth has a nine month term of pregnancy? How does the Big Bang settle that? Then identify from the creation that somebody superior had to make it and he had to be present before it was made. So the revelation, though not in detail, tells us that there is an almighty present for all the world. For me, it's God. And that whatever made it all was before all, which is God, and he has the power over it that he created. Why doesn't in evolution, why doesn't Earth moon? I don't even think the Earth's moon has a name. <laughs> That's interesting. All right. Why doesn't the Earth moon, according to evolution, and what the rocks tell us, and fossils tell us, why doesn't the moon just say, hey, you know what, Earth, I'm, I'm tired of you. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to go have my own little orbit, my own little time. Why don't the moon just take off? 
where Genesis 1 tells us God has set forth, and the Bible tells us God has set forth a path and a way for the moon and the sun. God also speaks through supernatural acts. What is the style and the workmanship of the devil to discard the supernatural? All these storms that have since I have been on this earth. It's El Nemo. It's global warming. And they'll probably come up with a thing for all these hurricanes, which we're now in the Greek alphabet and the one that's now in the Atlantic Ocean. As far as man is recorded, there's been. This is the greatest number of hurricanes. And the devil will have you to over, overwrite and erase the supernatural, and it was God. And yet, when you fill out a insurance, in the insurance policy, though I don't know about today, but it used to be insurance policy, an act of God. That statement is not of the devil. What does the, se the skeptic mind driven by Satan come to the conclusion? What does the skeptic say? It never happened. The Holocaust never happened. The life and ministry of Jesus never happened. Though there are facts in the Bible, it never happened. It was written by men. We can find something else to why there was a black death in Europe. There is not an unbeliever in the creation who has ever read the Bible who hasn't, who hasn't been aware that it is a book of miracles. You have to set forth, when you open the Bible as a skeptic, as an unbeliever, as an atheist, as an agnostic or a religion, you will have to step the fact that Jesus turned the water into wine. That's a miracle. And every bum and, and homeless person who is intoxicated by alcohol, and any person who wants to make alcohol righteous act in their life will come to you and say, well, Jesus turned the water into wine. And what you're saying is, not only to the defense of your alcohol, you are saying, well, look, 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 look what Jesus did in America. Exodus 7.5 and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. The Egyptians knew afterwards. They didn't know why all the plagues was happening. Some did, some didn't. There was a time in the plagues that God said, uh, the Israelis and the Egyptians. Bring all your animals and all your servants in this plague. I forget what it was. I think it was hail. It's coming. And the free will of God to man is, all right, bring it all in or leave it out there. The unbelieving Egyptians and maybe Israelis did not bring it in. God was not God, even though after all the plagues. Each one of the plagues was an occurrence against an Egyptian god. The Almighty God said, you want to see how well and powerful your Egyptian god is? My plagues will take on the characteristics of your gods, and your gods will fail you. It was to show Pharaoh and his men... The almighty miracle power 
of God. You know what we know of Pharaoh today that drowned in the Red Sea? He believes there's a God today while he's in hell. Numbers 14, 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have shown among them. God does expose himself. Here I am. Clearly by his power. And the kind of power he has. Let me tell you one way, way God works to me. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I preach and teach the Bible. Doing these videos. I teach my family every night except for church night. I have a Bible study on Fridays. And I preach on the streets on Saturday. And when I go to church Sunday morning, I hear my preacher in the Sunday school. Sunday service, or even Sunday evening. My preacher who was not there, through the power and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God the Father, will relate in the message something that happened to me and my daughter, whether family Bible study, whether, whether Friday Bible study, or the street ministry. And when we go about family Bible study, when we take a chapter and go through a chapter, and then we read the Bible every night to finish the Bible through the year, in our Bible study or in our Bible reading, it will match something that happened that day or the day before that God will use his word to verify his word that has been in our life. That's a miracle. And to me, that's the assurance that God is with me. God is using me. Whether people believe how I believe or how people don't believe what I do is correct and all that. God is saying, hey, listen, I, through the word of God. And he's telling the children of Israel. All the plagues of Egypt. You remember that, remember that time when, when you had light in your dwellings and the Egyptian's house had no light? You remember when you came to Mara and the waters were bitter and Moses took the tree and the waters became sweet? We attain about God through his miraculous acts and supernatural acts that he even does today in the church age. God is not limited to, to miracles in the Old Testament, in the Gospels, and not in the church age. He does miracles and great things even to the Christians in the church. And about the Bible, there is the aim that these supernatural acts are fabled, that they are really factual the devil will have men and women does well let me tell you what scholars believe jonah never died in that way oh he lived in a, in a nasal cavity that is a lie and let me put forth on record now you can sign my name to it Jonah not only was in that whale, he was in the whale's belly, and he died in the whale's belly, and he went to hell. Jonah had a dead body in the whale's belly, and his soul was in hell. For Jesus said that three days and three nights, as Jonah was in the heart of the whale's belly, so will the, will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth, in the earth. And Jesus and Jonah died and went to hell. I believe that of a surety. 
and moronic seminary scholars. And if you don't believe that, you are a sinner and you need to confess your sins and get right with God, whoever you are. Jonah died and went to hell and was resurrected. And that is a miracle. And if you don't believe that, you are taking Satan's side against the miracle of God. Ooh, you got preaching there. That's right. Because there are pastors out there. There are students of the Bible. And my family has heard them out of a pulpit, out of a podium. Jonah didn't die. Yes, he did. What you're saying is a supernatural fact of God. You are saying is a fable and you are lying. Those supernatural acts should that we believe in God. Not believing there is a God is a rig to response in the contrast to the supernatural miracles of God. God does not have the capability of having all the moons circle the planets in our solar system. It must be evolution. Because the Almighty God has not that power. We do not want to be responsible to that God. That God of the Bible says there's a hell. And we say, oh, well, there is no hell. We believe something else. Anything but God. Even when God's supernatural powers are to speak to me and, and, and speak to you. And I'll tell you another way the devil has it. Maybe one or two more. I'll tell you how the devil does it. This came to my flat and you can download this at our website. You know how else the devil does it? He's got a realm of cartoons and comic books. Of superheroes with powers. Anything but God. And they're so superhero on it that they don't even know that the underwear goes under the clothes, not on the outside. Superman does not know where his underpants needs to go. Wonder Woman is a Wonder Woman of power and strength, but she cannot cover her bosoms. Batman and Robin are called by the commissioner to go out and fight crime, but they can't show up at the church Sunday morning. And when you tell these people that believe in the superpowers of, 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 of these men and women and, and whatever they be, when you tell them about the supernatural power of God in the miracles, oh, I don't believe that. And there are Christians involved in those superpower hero garbage. Spider-Man and Batman and Robin and Superman and the Fantastic Four and Aquaman. Oh, Jesus? No. God? No. I'll read their comic books, but I won't read their Bible, God's Bible. Deuteronomy 435. Maybe this will be the last one. Unto thee it is showed that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. Whoa. That's Deuteronomy 435. What? What are you to know? You're to know he is God. Do you know he is God? Why not? Deuteronomy 4.35 says, It unto thee it was shown, that thou mayest know that he, that the, know that the Lord, he is God. And there's none else beside him. The Catholics don't know that. They think Mary.
because the Catholics are outside the Bible. They got traditions and the Missal and 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 uh, um, catechism. They don't have the Bible. The signs and wonders and miracles he did, according to verse thirty-four. Look, Deuteronomy four thirty-four. Or has God to say to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation? That's not America. That's Israel. And how he took Israel? By temptation, by signs, by wonders, and by war. So that's the Jehovah Witnesses. We can't go to war. God tells us thou shalt not kill. War. And by a mighty hand, by a a stretched out arm and by great terrors according to all that the Lord your God did for you Israel in Egypt before your eyes when God does miracles you know it and it demonstrates that he is God the Lord Jesus Christ healed ten lepers one of them turned around he's healed one man, Jesus Christ, healed. Was he blind? I think he was blind. And he went back to his parents. He went back to the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they all saw, hey, yeah, this was our son. And he was born blind. How he sees, we don't know. It was a stated fact. When... Peter and John are standing outside the temple and that crippled man got up, walked, and leaped and jumped. And when they're standing there before the, the council of Israel, the Sanhedrin, and this miracle happened, they said this miracle, is just, the guy's behind them dancing and jumping and leaping. We cannot deny the miracle. Scholars can Jonah didn't die and go to hell. When we read the story of Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo in the fiery furnace, and Nebuchadnezzar says, I see the Son of God. And the modern Bible say, I see a Son of God. You filthy liar. You know what that miracle tells me? Duh, 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 son of God can get me through the fire. The son of God, God is able to get me out of the lion's den. God is able to calm the storm. God is able if he will, if, it is in his, if it's in his will, if I got an infirmity, if I got a disease, or I got something wrong with he is able, if it's his will, to heal me. What does evolution speak? What is the, the traditions of a religion speak? That we have an almighty creator God that was before his creation, that has the power of over to his creation, and he exposes himself through those mighty powers and miracles, and scholars and <coughs> Christians deny them and write them off, and that is a tool of Satan. It never happened. And don't you tell me, because I've talked to Christians, I've talked to pastors, I've talked to instructors, I've talked to scholars, Jonah did not die and go to hell. You're of the devil. And I will say that to anybody and everyone, regardless of whoever you are, if you're going to tell me that Jonah did not die and go to hell, I call you a liar. And you can have whatever you want to do it with me. You, you can get rid of me. You can kill me. You, 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 you can write me off. And you'll stand at the judgment seat of Christ as your works will burn up as wood and hay, wood, hay and stubble. And Stiley will get gold, silver, and precious stone for standing up and standing on the word of God. 
We have an almighty, wonderful, great God. 